Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and my law firm assists professionals with employment contract issues. Uh, today I'm going to talk about what an offer letter should include. Now, there will be jobs that just provide an offer letter with no employment agreement to follow, and then there will be other jobs where they will send the offer letter, expect the professional to sign it, essentially agreeing to the terms of the offer letter, and then they'll provide an employment agreement with uh, the details of the employment relationship. So what is normally in an offer letter? Uh, kind of obvious things. So compensation, bonus structure, benefits offered, um, if it's a healthcare position, the malpractice insurance obligations, you know, um, maybe some language about the restrictive covenants. So a non-compete, non-solicitation agreement, uh, how long the contract lasts, how it can be terminated. But in a very brief, like one sentence, this is what it's going to be, uh, you know, manner. Um, so if you're okay with what's listed in the offer letter, most people would sign it, send it back. And then the employer would work on getting an employment agreement together and then sent off to the professional for review. Now, if you sign an offer letter, it doesn't mean you're stuck with everything you agreed to. If in review of the employment agreement, things substantially have changed. So meaning the fine print may not look <laughs> as great as what it looks like in the offer letter. So if you've signed an offer letter, unless it states it's somehow binding in some way, which almost none of them ever are, um, you're still free to negotiate after you've signed the offer letter. Now the employer may take umbrage with this and say, well, look, you've already agreed to these terms, but look, uh, if they say your base comp is 150,000, but then when you start reading it, uh, you know, it's, it's maybe partially based upon production or fully based on production after a certain period of time, it can change your outlook on the position. Uh, same thing that goes for, you know, if they're paying for your insurance. Uh, if you're a healthcare provider, they're gonna pay your underlying premium, but maybe you have to pay for tail insurance after the contract ends, which can be a, a significant expense for some. Now, if you're in a position where you're just signing the offer letter, and there's no contract to follow. I know for most lawyers, almost no lawyer signs an employment agreement. Uh, it's all based on, they send you an offer letter, this is how much you're gonna make, and then that's it. Then you start the job, and, and that's what you're kind of going off of, is that offer letter. So you certainly wanna negotiate in advance. Um, however, if you have signed the offer letter and you're still getting an employment agreement, you're not stuck, <laughs> you can still negotiate, and then ultimately, if you decide not to sign the employment agreement, they can't force you to start work, uh, so you just move on. And that's just kind of how business goes. So once again, the things you want in the offer letter are the things that are important to you, the compensation, the benefits, which are like time off, uh, you know, health, vision, dental, life, disability. Are they gonna pay for your licensing, dues and fees, that type of thing. Um, how long the contract lasts, how you can get out of it, how much notice you have to provide, and then the restrictive covenants, uh, the non-compete, non-solicit, non-disparagement, the, that, you know, the, the terms of that. So like if you're, if you want to know about the non-compete, then, uh, it, it, you know, it, the briefest way possible, one year, five miles from your primary practice location or something like that. And then the employment agreement will have the actual details of it. You should never sign a non-compete <laughs> that is extraordinarily brief. Uh, it has to be spelled out. It normally would take up at least a page of a contract uh, to get the details uh, correct. So that's what should go in an offer letter. If you have any questions about an offer letter, letter of intent, employment agreement, feel free to contact my law firm at the phone number listed below in the description, uh, or you can reach us through our website, shellylaw.com. All right, appreciate you watching the video. Thanks.